Okay, let's continue practicing some very basic VBA functions and subroutines. In the last video, we introduced you to the very basic Hello World uh, message box sub, so let's do something different this time. Once again, open your VBA editor or hit Alt F11. I have a module left over in the sub created from the last video. If you don't have this, I'm going to close that out. You need to go to Insert Module, not Class Module, and it'll place Module 1 right here. Once you have that, you should have a blank. And if you don't have this code, feel free to pause and copy it now. But what I want to do next is modify this. I'm going to add a second sub to the same page. This one's going to be sub modified hello. OK, so again, we came up with this name ourselves. Sub and end sub are part of the VBA library, so they're color, cover, colored in blue. We're going to create a variable. And we do that by using the keyword dim, which stands for dimension. Variables in VBA are stored and are excuse me named storage locations in your computer's RAM or memory. So the word dim stands for dimension, and then I'm going to give a variable a name. In this case, I'm going to make one called n, which is going to stand for name. I'm going to dim m n as, and I'm going to call it a string. Now notice how VBA the editor pulls up a list of possible data types or variable types I can create. There's many, many of those. But I'm going to write string, hit tab. As soon as I hit enter, notice that dim, as, and string are all blue. Those are all keywords in VBA. N is a name I came up with. I can call this whatever I feel like. It doesn't matter. Well, not quite everything. I can't have semicolons in the names. But I'm just going to stick with N. So currently, n is equal to absolutely nothing. So I have my locals window open down here. If you don't have that, I'm going to close it. I want you to come to view. This is in a prior video and go to locals window. Also, I'm going to use the debugging that you've learned in a previous video as well. I'm going to hit F8, which is going to walk me through this function step by step. Now notice when I did that, my cursor had to be inside of this function. Anywhere, including the first and last lines. It can't be outside, can't be before. So I hit F8, and it says, let's start your function. We notice that you have a variable called n, and at this point in the function, it's currently set to nothing, but we know that you intend for this n to be a string. So this locals window is a view of all the variables you've created that exist in memory. Think of variables in memory much like cells on a worksheet. Each cell has a name. This is E9. This is K4. These are named storage locations for you to place data in a worksheet. And you can use these much like you can use variables. The difference is, in your VBA editor, that when you create a variable with a dim statement, it's being created in, your me in memory. So you don't see it on a worksheet like you would with a cell. Rather, you can see it here in your locals window. So I'm going to hit F8 again. Basically, it just goes right to the end of the function. The sub is done. What I want to do is give n a value. So in my very next line, I'm going to say n equals, and I'm going to put a name in there. Homer Simpson. Now, if you're taking this or watching this video as part of my IS-201 class, then you know that just like with databases uh, and uh, other things we've worked with in class, whenever we're, we're dealing with text, text has to be covered or wrapped in double quotes, whereas numbers don't need double quotes. Anyway, because n is a string, which is the term we use for anything, uh, a value that's going to include text as well as numbers and other word characters, it's got to be wrapped in double quotes. So let's hit F8 again. Uh, it says we recognize you've got a dim statement with an n. Hit n again, or sorry, hit F8 again. Our, our processor moves down to this line. The yellow highlighted line is the line that hasn't yet been processed, but is going to be the next time we hit F8. So as I hit F8 again, it goes to the end of the sub. And notice now that n is set to Homer Simpson in memory. So a part of our computer's RAM now has a named storage location called n, and the value of that storage location is set to Homer Simpson. I'm going to stop that debugging. And at this point, I'm going to print out our message box, the variable n. Now notice there's a space here. As soon as I move to the next line, that's just something that message box wants. Don't worry about it. It'll automatically put it in there if you don't include it. Anyway, let's go ahead and hit F8 again and walk through here at this point. N is still set to 0. Now it's equal to Homer Simpson. What's going to happen when I hit F8 again? 
it's going to pop open the value of n in a message box. Notice it didn't put the letter n, it put the value of that variable or that name storage location here up in a message box. Okay, I'm going to do a couple more things. First of all, I'm going to do what's called comment out this code. If you use, we call this an escape character, it's a single quote. It changes the text to green. What this means, the single quote now, is that whatever's on this line won't be processed in the VBA compiler. Instead, it's going to skip that line. Why would I use this? Well, it allows me to keep track of stuff that I, that I don't want to lose. So what I want to do next is print n out to a cell on the page. So in a previous video, you've learned how to print things out to your immediate window using debug.print. Instead, we want to print this out to a cell. So I'm going to use a command called range. And range wants a named storage location on the worksheet. So in particular, I'm going to put Homer Simpson in B2. So because B2 has a letter in it, once again, I've got to wrap this in double quotes. Okay, range B2. Now range B2 is what we call an object. It refers to the cell object here, B2. Now this object has many properties. B2 can have a certain value stored in it. It can have a width. It can have a height. It can have a background color. It can have a font size. It can have a, a font family. There are many different properties, and we refer to these properties by saying dot, and then we have many different things we can go to. There's various font uh, characteristics, there's uh, width, there's height. Um, all of these things you see here are properties. See where you have this little hand holding a notepad? These are all properties of the object. They're things that we can read and write about that object. This little thing here that looks like a flying eraser or something like that, these are what we call uh, methods. These are things that the range B2 method can do. For example, we could, uh, there we go, what I meant to do was insert, there it is. We could say range B2 dot insert and insert a row or a column next to that. That's something that we do. Anyway, what I want to do is I want to refer to a property called value, meaning what's stored inside the cell. And I'm going to use an assignment statement same. In other words, I'm going to assign a value to range b2. I do that by putting range b2.value on the left side of the equal sign, and then whatever it is I want to assign into that cell on the right side. Let's say I put just the number 1, because 1 does, is a number, not any letters. I don't need double quotes around it. I'm going to play this function. I have this n with Homer Simpson in it. I haven't done anything with that, but now when I process this line, you're going to see the value of 1, and the function's all over, so I'm going to go back. We have now the value of 1 there in B2. All right, so what if I want to put the value of n in range B2? All I have to do is put the variable n right there. So let's play this again, F8. There's our uh, name storage location n, oops, excuse me, with the value of nothing. I hit F8 again. It puts Homer Simpson in that cell, or excuse me, not a cell, it puts it in that variable value. And now I'm going to take the value of n and put it in the value of range b2. That's been processed. I go back to my spreadsheet and there's Homer Simpson. So there's our simple example of using and declaring variables uh, as named storage locations as well as cell references as reference storage locations.